You turned your back on your God. Right. Our forefathers turned their backs on our God, and now it has brought us to this very moment where we're in Charleston, South Carolina, still slaves. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at Genesis. Yes, you got power with God. That's who you are. Right. But you cannot activate it as a nigga. Right. You can't activate it as a hoe, as right. a thought, as a ganger, as a gay banger. Right. It, it does not activate the God gene. Right. You want to activate the God gene? Then you better do what God says. Right. Read what you got. Genesis. The truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men that stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready, we coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non-violent, Bible-based movement. IUIC. Everything the officers bringing out is on point. The the pastor that's in the church down here, how many times have you seen him here? Bring it out. He know what he's supposed to know what's going on out of God's mouth. This is the mouth of God. Nobody in Charleston is really teaching our people this. Y'all sisters are princesses. You brothers are kings of the earth. Right. It's in your spirit. You feel it every time you wake up. Every time you look in the mirror, you feel that there's something more to this life than what you see every day. Tell me I'm lying. I'm lying. I know I'm not lying. I saw a sister over here, the other sister listening from uh, far when I was over there. There's something in your spirit. So why is it important that we show up on your block today? Why is it important that you men raise up in your community and show up for your community rather than us having to come here? Because these are the last days written of in the Bible. That war that the brother is talking about that's taking place on earth right now, that's recorded right here. It's recorded right here with Israel with, and all these other nations. Get, for, hold that. Get Matthew 24 real quick. Start at verse 6. Start at verse 6. Because if nobody, if you never learn to keep God's commandments, how are you going to get the kingdom of heaven? Right. So you telling me you can live every day, day to day like you're living, and you're going to get the kingdom of heaven? Do you think so? What about you, sis? Brother right here, what, what, what you think? Do you think you can live day to day like you're living right now? Do y'all think that, and you're going to get the kingdom of heaven? You're going to go to heaven? Yes or no? You can give me a head nod. No. So if, if, if your desire is to live forever in the kingdom of heaven, which is a real thing, how do you get it if nobody's teaching it to you? Because mama didn't teach it, right? Because she didn't know it. Everything that has been passed down from us since slavery, we have no clue about the truth that God's read is talking about. But listen to this, read. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are y'all hearing of wars today? Are y'all hearing of wars? Where the war at right now? Huh? Russia and Ukraine, that's a rumor, of, that's a war that's taking place. That ain't just a rumor, that's a real war. Where's another war that's taking place right now? Huh? Yeah, the war is in your mind. The ultimate war is in your mind. But the war is in Israel right now. Gaza, Lebanon, Iran, they're at war right now. Christ says in the last days, you're going to hear of war and rumors of war. Come on. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. All these things must come to pass. Why? Read on. But the end is not yet. But it ain't the end because all of God's servants haven't been sealed yet. Right. You are servants of the Most High God. Right. Right. That's who you are. We all have to wake up the servants of the Most High God. Right. The children of Israel, you, if you see yourself on this side, give me that service. If you see yourself on this side, you are a servant of the Most High God. Right. What does that mean? You need to learn how to what? Serve God. Right. I'm going to ask you a question. When do you serve God, sis? On Sunday? No. You know, when, when do you, when, when, I, when, I pray, I pray. you pray? Okay. When do you serve God, sis? 
every other day. What about you, sis? When have we been? When have we been taught to serve God, sister? On what day? Sunday. On Sunday. Is that in the Bible? Who? We wasn't taught that. Now, where are you from? What? Well, when were you taught to serve God? Okay. All praises. Now let me ask you this. What day is the Sabbath day? You see what I'm saying? Which day is the Sabbath day? Saturday is the Sabbath day. God hollowed that day between himself and us. Nobody else. That's in the Bible. But you know what the oppressor has taught us? That the Bible is for everybody. Read this real quick. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 Remember the Sabbath day Why God got to tell you to remember the Sabbath day Because you forgot it Now you say I go to I serve God every day Even though you should by keeping the commandments But to come together as a congregation And to, to worship That's the Sabbath day That's Saturday Guess what you're in church right now You're standing before the church right now Because the church is a people before it's a building You understand God says remember the Sabbath day Come on to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. My bad. This is that's just one example. Now go back to Joel chapter 3, 14, real quick, because what's taking place on earth is for you. These nations going to war is what God prophesies He will make happen on the earth through the salvation that's going to bring about the salvation of the children of Israel. Read this real quick. Joel chapter 3 verse 14 Multitudes Multitudes in a valley of decision For the day of the Lord is near The day of the Lord is what? Is near in the valley of decision The valley of decision is over here in the east Over here where they're warring at right now Where they're throwing bombs at each other Right now Israel is bombing Southern Lebanon and Iran is trying to bomb Israel That's what's going on Y'all watch the news? Y'all see that right? If you don't see it you are not woke as they say in these last days like I was bringing out. You're not woke. You are still sleeping because you have not realized that you are the children of Israel. Right. It hasn't dawned on you yet who you are. If I said, brother, what's your nationality? What'd you say? You say black. If I said, brother, what's your nationality? What'd you say? Black. What about you? Black. You say the same thing? You. Now, I just wanted to get to one other different point, but you look at each other. He say black, he say black, she say black, she say black. You say African American. Ain't we the same people? Right. So why you got two different nationalities? Why are you called African American? Where that name come from? That name comes from two white men, Leo Scipio Africanus and America Vespucci. So when you say that you're an African American, which is a, 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 a byproduct, you're saying that you come from two white men. You come from two white men. Is that possible? Uh, he said yes it is. Is it possible for a, 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 a man to come from two white men? Is that possible? See, I want you to rethink that. We gotta, re we gotta reform the mind. Is it possible for you to come from two white men? No. Two white men can't produce life. Right. So how are you an African American? Bring it up. Jesse Jackson gave you that name in the early 1960s I believe. 1986. Jesse Jackson gave it a name in 1986. You became an African American. Before that, you were Afro American. Before that, you was just Negro. What does God call you? What we gotta realize is that we have accepted everything that the oppressor has given us, all the way down to the damn chitlins that the slaves used to cook and make the best chitlins out of in slavery. We've accepted everything. Now they they, they have force fed us a new way of life. They have force fed us a new dress code. This is what they've done. And we live right here in the projects and in the ghettos and we never take it and consider that we are God's chosen people. Who are we? Who were those men and those women that got off of the slave ships down there at the docks? Who were they? What was their nationality? What did they believe? What language did they speak? Do you ask yourself those questions? No. Why? Because a system has been put in place for you not to remember that. Give me Romans 12 and 2. You must remember that you are God's chosen people. You're not black. You're not African American. You're not Puerto Rican. You ain't none of that. God, don't, God never gave us those names. Read this. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. 
this world. You can't be conformed to this world. That's what we've done. Christ has been telling us the whole time. Remember who you are. Remember, hold that. Give me first Kings. You gotta remember that you're an Israelite. Right. You see yourself on this side? Y'all got y'all got flyers? Flip the flyers over. Look on your flyer. Where your flyer at? Flip your flyer over. Don't just fold it up. This right here is the most important black and white piece of paper that you've ever got in your life. That you've ever got in your life. The information on this black and white paper is the best information that you've ever got in your entire life. This right here is worth more than a billion dollars. Black and white, that ink on that white paper is more than is worth more than a billion dollars. You know why? Because the best kept secret in the world is on that paper. You know what that secret is? Look on the back at the 12 tribes. Look on the back at the 12 tribes. They have hidden us. They have covered our faces and now we call ourselves African American and black. That's why they spend millions upon millions and billions of dollars on images like Passion of the Christ, the Son of God. These different movies where they create the white man as God. That's why they spend millions of dollars so that you never realize that you are an Israelite. That is a billion dollars. Read what you got. First Kings chapter 8 verse 46. Right if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. Why? Because we've all sinned. You think you sin? Do you commit sin, brother? Yo, you, we're in sin right now. Sister, do you sin? We've all sinned. Mama, you agree? We all sin? There's so much killing going on in Charleston right now till it's ridiculous. Oh, y'all not witnessing the murder? Some of y'all witness and see the murder and don't say nothing, right? Right. There's drug dealers on our corners pushing poison to our people, right? Nobody saying nothing? We are sinning right now. Read again. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. God said, the Solomon said, if they sin against you, for there's no man that sinneth not. Come on. And thou be angry with them. And you be angry with your people, God. Come on. And deliver them to the enemy. Deliver them what? To the enemy. What you're looking at right here is when God delivered us to the enemy. Right. When you look on the front of your flyer, Look on the front of it. When you look on the front of your flyer, this is God delivering us to the enemy. Read it again. Right. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them. God was what? Angry with them. God was angry with you, bro. He was angry with our forefathers and foremothers that came on slave ships and docked right here in Charleston. Right. God was angry with them, and he did what? And delivered them to the enemy. This is us being delivered to the enemy. You see this? This is the children of Israel, God's chosen people. You, sis, That's right. this is your foremothers and forefathers in Charleston right here right. being delivered to the enemy. It's been in the Bible the whole time, and your Christian culture ain't told you nothing about it. Yeah, right. You have not ever read it because the book is still sitting on grandma's shelf right now. Right. Your history has been right in your face right. this whole time, and we have not even given it one thought. And he delivered them to the enemy. Come on. So that they carried them away captive. So that they do what? Carried them away captive. How were we carried away? Sister, how was we carried away? Yeah. You again, sis. You smart. I know you got it. How were the people carried? How were our people carried into this land? You. How were we carried here? What? Through boats. We were carried here through boats. Come on. So that they carried them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Far or near Jerusalem. That's why this is the best kept secret. Because the minute you wake up and realize that you're an Israelite, guess what happens? You stop breaking God's commandments. Right. You stop, you stop putting that razor on your face, bro. Right. You stop balding your head, brother. Right. That's what you're going to stop doing. And when you stop doing that, these other nations, they're looking around right now. Like they come through on their little horsebacks, right? They come through in their little golf carts. How many people mess with them? Nobody said nothing to them, right? They good in your hood. Right? They good in the hood. They, what do you say? They are all over. But the minute that you start keeping God's commandments, you're going to stop by pork, right. shrimp, crab, lobster. You ain't going to eat that stuff no more. You eat that now? You know why you eat that? Because your foremothers and foremothers, that's all they had to eat. Right. Nobody read the Bible and, and, and realized that we ain't supposed to eat like this. Right. We're not supposed to consume these things. Right. God was angry with us. He delivered us to the enemy. Come on. Yet, if they shall be think themselves. God says, now, what's your name? Dara. Dara. What's your name, my sister? Janice? 
God says, now Miss Janice and Daryl, what's your name? Brian. Brian? Brandon. Brandon and Richard. Richard. Now, if they shall what? Bethink themselves. If you have if you bethink yourself, how do you bethink yourself? Bethink. If I said, Miss Janice, bethink what you did yesterday, what am I asking you to do? To what? Remember what to remember what you did yesterday. Right. God says, yeah, what? Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. My sister across the street, we're talking to you too. If you shall bethink yourself, meaning if you shall remember yourself. Right. If you shall remember who you are. Come on. In the land. In the what? In the land. In the land, this land that you're standing on right now. Whither they were carried captive. Well, they were what? Carried captive. In this land right here that your feet are standing on where you were carried captive as slaves right here. Right. Come on. And repent. And do what? And repent. How do you repent, Brandon? How do you repent? What does repent mean? Not a trick question. What about you, sis? You know? Ask God for forgiveness. What do you think? Ask for forgiveness. Be think. I mean, uh, repent means to turn from your ways. Right. Right. To turn from what you learned in America, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween that's coming up. Right. Labor Day, Fourth of July, New Year's. When you are, is any of those in the Bible? Can you read about any of that in the scriptures? So where did you learn that? Right here in America, where you brought the slaves. What happened is they took your, they took the sons of those slaves that came here, killed the father, sold the son to another white man, and taught him how to be a good old American boy. So when he had a son. Guess what he taught his son? How to be a good old American boy. Don't be strong. Don't be courageous. Don't be a revolutionary. Don't rise up and fight for your people. Be docile. Don't say nothing when you see sin. Be who you be exactly the good boy that I've chosen you to be, that I've created you to be. Shave your face off because that's the standard of beauty that is being set on the earth. Right. Bald your head like Michael Jordan because that's the standard that is being set on the earth, right? right? That's what we see. We see them make money. We see them live good lives and it's all a damn lie. Right. Right. It's all to provoke you to continue to break God's commandments. Right. God right. says, but if you bethink yourself in this land where you were carried captive and repent, Turn from your evil ways and do what? And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive. God says, make supplication unto to, to him in this land where you was carried captive. How do you how do you make supplication? That ain't an everyday average Negro word, right? right. What does supplication mean? Right. Right. It means you need to beg God and, and ask for forgiveness. I didn't know I was an Israelite. I didn't know that I couldn't eat uh, pork chops. I didn't know pork chops was against was, was breaking God's laws. That's what you got to do. Right. If you leave here today and you're going to have you a nice big pork chop sandwich tomorrow, bro, you, are, you have backed yourself into a deeper corner. You've let Satan take away all this information that you're standing here getting today. Right. You got to stop eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Right. You got to cut it out since you eat that. You sure? All right, don't eat that. Bro, I say, yeah, I, I eat it. But can you stop doing it for God? If, if you can you say yes you can what about you can you stop eating pork shrimp crab and lobster for the most high god you don't eat that now what about you brandon can you stop doing that you can do it can you grow a beard for god huh no don't do it for yourself give me proverbs 3. bring it up proverbs 3. don't do it for yourself see that's our problem we want to do everything we, we think we think we matter, but you are the temple of God. God put that spirit in you. Right. Watch this, read. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord. With all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't trust in you. Come on, uh, come on up here, sister. Let me talk to you. He says, come on, let me talk to you. What's your name? We read, we, we, we're going over scripture. They don't go over in church. What God said? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. God says, it's the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Come on. And lean not 
unto thine own understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding. See, that's what we do. We lean to our own understanding and we create and make things sufficient for ourselves. Right. Versus doing what God said do. Right. You understand that? You, he read Leviticus uh, 19, right? Not 19. You read uh, Leviticus 21? Go that. Read that. We're going to read it again. Because don't just grow to hell for yourself. Don't do that. Do it because God says, you're a man. You should grow to hell. Look, trim it up. Now, I don't grow much. See, this is all I get. I, I'm pissed off. But I'm accepted. But I'm mad. I, let me see. I want me some of this right here. Look at that. I want me some of this. I want some of that right there. Look at this brother right here. See how you got it nice and trimmed up? The Lord ain't give me that. I want it so bad. And you probably could get a full beard, can't you? Man, you listen. What God said. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Yeah. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Somebody got a Zonderous Compact Bible Dictionary? God says, they, the man, you shall not make baldness, meaning take a razor and make your head bald. Come on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither don't shave off the corner of your beard. That's a law. Christ had a beard. Christ says, I look just like my father. That means his father got what? A beard. Now, give me the Zonderman's Compact Bible Dictionary. We got one? Read this real quick. Beard. A badge. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is a beard? A badge. You know how police wear a badge? You know that he's a police? You know how a fireman, he got on a badge? You say, oh, he's a fireman. Bring it up. That badge signifies something, right? God says that your beard is a what? A badge of manly dignity. Your beard is a badge of manly dignity. That's why when you dock, when our forefathers docked on the slave ships here in Charleston, the first thing they did, they said, what? Cut his beard. You a boy. You're a boy. Come here, boy. Go on in that cotton field, boy. You better pick 35, 50 pounds of cotton today, boy. I'm going to chop your hand off. Bring your wife to me, boy, because I'm going to let uh, Master Charles down the street sleep with her tonight. You a boy, 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 boy. That's what they've done to us. So now we look in the mirror and we like, oh, yeah, let me, let me look good. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me shave this off because... The oppressor has put a satellite in your brain that he don't need to tell you this no more. It automatically activates. The hair start growing on your face, you go, eh, I'm, nah, I ain't doing that. I'm not doing that. God says that's a badge of manly dignity. That's right. That's how you know you a man. Right. You understand? Only two people on the planet ain't got hair on their face. There go three of them right there. They ain't got no hair on their face. Women and babies. You ain't a woman and you're not a baby. So grow your beard like God said. Trim it up. Right. Make it look nice like this right here. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Put your nice little line on it because God said do it. Yes. And when you start keeping God's commandments, guess what? That's when you're going to start to see things in your life change. Right. Yeah, people going people gonna, to people gonna ask you, why are you doing this? Why you look like this, brother? Why are you doing that? Why you, what's them little funny little things on your shirt? You know how many times a day we get asked this? Right. What's them little funny little things on your shirt? These are fringes. God said put them on all your clothing for generation to generation. That means forever. Right. These are the things we lack and we wonder why we're getting shot down in Charleston. Hello. You wonder why we die at such a high rate. Didn't y'all just have a murder over here just a few weeks ago? Yeah. Look at that. The kids that are like, yeah? That nigga dead. You had another, another couple of, you don't have many murders in this area in the mother apartments that uh, the officers that sent us the other day. God got brothers killing each other around here for nothing, man. Right. And it's all because we don't know how to apply God's laws. Right. Right. It's all because we have not known that we are the children of Israel. Right. That I'm supposed to see Christ in you. Right. Not just another nigga on the street. Right. I'm supposed to see Christ in you. Right. As a black man. Not just another old man on the street. Right. That's how we got to move. When we start to move like this, bro. Give me Psalms 82. Give me Psalms 82. When you start to move like this, the God gene is going to activate. That's right. When you start changing your mind to fit what God says that you're supposed to be in the Bible, that God gene in your mind is going to start to activate. And that's when the other nations that walk around here, that ride in their little golf carts, that come through on horseback in their little chariots, that's when they're going to start to see like something is going on with these people that we've had in bondage for over 450 years here. What is going on? God is, God is raising them up. Read. Psalms chapter 82 verse 6. Yeah. I have said, ye are gods. What did God tell them? Ye are gods. You are gods. 
You are gods. You sisters are princesses. Right. You are gods. Come on. And all of you are children of the Most High. Who is in these projects teaching these young men that they are gods? Where are the leaders in Charleston? What part of Charleston we at? What's this? What's this called over here? Downtown? This is called downtown. Who's in downtown Charleston teaching these young men like this brother right here, Zion? That's your name? How I know that? Come here. I'm a prophet. That's why I know. He like, oh man, him again? Zion. Who's in these projects teaching Zion? Bro, you are a god on the earth. Bring it up. You're a king. Nobody. It ain't the it ain't the pastor from down the street. He ain't here. He ain't never been here. And you probably don't even know his name. Right. You see what he say? Sure don't. He don't care. He want he wants you to come to church on Sunday. Put your money in the collection plate that you don't work hard for all week long and put it in the damn collection plate. If it ain't enough in the collection plate, he gonna pass it around a second time. Right. He yeah. tell the congregation, I know you can do better than that. Right. He walk away with fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars for telling you nothing on Sunday. Wake right. up. Meanwhile, you leave the church broken. Can't pay a light bill because you gave it all to him. That he, he telling you, oh, you go, your blessing around the corner. Uh-huh. Your season is on the way. He giving you that old bull crap prosperity doctrine. Meanwhile, you got to come back to the hood. Right. Where your light bill is due. Right. Where your rent is due. Right. Where you need food on the table. Right. right. Who's supplying these things for you? It ain't the leaders in Charleston. Right. right. Where are they? Right. Where are the NAACP? Right. right. Where they at? Where's Black Lives Matter? Wake right. up. Where they at? Right. They are nowhere to be found because Black Lives don't matter to them. Right. And that organization is ran by the white man any damn way. That's right. George Soroso, ain't that his name? Yes, sir. All of these things are set up against us. Right. Give me, right. read that, finish that off. I have said, ye are gods. The Most High God says, you men are gods. Come on. And all of you. Are children of the Most High, and you children of the Most High God. Right. Read. But ye shall die like men. Now you are gonna die like men though, because you turned your back on your God. Right. That's right. You turned your back on your God. Right. Our forefathers turned their backs on our God, and now it has brought us to this very moment where we're in Charleston, South Carolina, still slaves. Right. right. You say I ain't a slave. I ain't got no chain on my ankle. I ain't got no chain on my on, on my wrist. I ain't got no chain on my neck. No, you don't. But you got a chain on your brain. You got a chain on your brain, though. Because if I ask you your nationality, you're going to tell me black or you're going to tell me African-American. That's a chain with a dead boat lock on your true nationality and who you really are. That's what that is. You got to take a pair of grip pies or whatever you call that damn utensil and break the lock. The utensil you need to break the lock with is called the Bible. All the utensils that you need. This ain't just a book. This is a nuclear weapon. This ain't just a regular book, bro. This Bible is a nuclear weapon because when you men start raising up and becoming the men that the Lord has called you to be, when you pick up this microphone and start teaching your people, guess what? You are reaping and bringing destruction on America. That's what you're doing. This Bible and what's written in it is going to destroy America. That's why you are God, bro. You got power with God. Give me that in Genesis. You got power with God. That's who you are. But you cannot activate it as a nigga. You can't activate it as a hoe, as a thought, as a ganger, as a gangbanger. It, it does not activate the God gene. You want to activate the God gene? Then you better do what God says. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 32 verse 27. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Now this is Jacob. He's wrestling with an angel. He said, what's your name? He said, Jacob. Guess what? You are the children of Jacob. Right, right, Jacob's right. name was changed. Let's see what it was changed to. But Israel, for as a prince has thou power with God. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God. That's right. You are the children of Jacob, the children of Israel. Right. You have power with God. That's right. But you can't tap into it as a nigga. Right. You can't tap into it with a nigga characteristic. You understand that, bro? Right. We got to change. 50 Cent. The, what, I, what, I'm, I'm, still, I'm, I'm with old rappers. What's the new rapper's name? Diddy. Diddy? Oh, damn, Diddy. Sheesh. Damn. No Diddy. Damn. 
You can't follow Diddy. You can't follow Mace. You can't follow a uh, uh, baby. You can't follow King Von. You can't be around here with the poo shiesty look on your face. That's not who you are. Wake him up. The Most High God says you are God. You need, to, you need to learn how to be a God. How do you do that? You transform your mind according to the word of God. You want to be a God? Then you transform by the word of God. You understand that? Nobody else is going to come and teach our people this. Give me uh, 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 Psalms 80, uh, 83. Read that. Psalms chapter 83 verse 2. For you, thine enemies make a tumult. We got to re remember and realize that the people that have put us in this condition, our enemies make a tumult. They come together. They got what they call think tanks on how to keep you oppressed. Teach. You think these projects is just here? This is a design, bro. Right. right. This is a design. Pro these pro every project that you go to, you're going to find our people. Right. We call it the what? The hood. Or the what? Project. The projects. Or what? Another name. It's all with a G. Ghetto. The what? Ghetto. The ghetto. Now, somebody give me the definition of ghetto. You know which one I want? I want the Wikipedia definition of the word ghetto. Yeah. Let's see why we call it, why, why, why we are in the ghetto. Let's see why we are in the projects. All these things, nobody, I'm going to tell you something, nobody teaching this. You go to church, you're going to get a white man sitting on a, on a cross with his fingers up like this right here, and you're going to get a song, a dance, and pass the damn collection plate, and you're going to leave not knowing nothing, still in sin. Wake up. We're out here to tell you to turn away from sin, because the destruction that's taking place in Israel right now, oh, the United States is already involved. They have no choice but to get involved because God says he's going to make them get involved. Right. And then you're going to start to see them same bombs come this way. Right. When them missiles come this way, who's going to save you? Bring it out. Who can save you from the destruction that come from nuclear missiles? From ICBM missiles, who can save you? Who? Who? Only one can save you. His name is Jesus Christ, the Black Messiah. He's the only one that can save you. Now, if you're breaking His commandments, are you going to be saved? No. No. You're gonna burn when them nuclear when that nuclear fire turn on America. That's what the Bible talking about. Yeah, white people done made, done made you think that Christ is coming back. And he gonna give out hugs and kisses. That he's coming back to, to, to shake hands and say, "Job well done, brother. Come on to the kingdom." No, that ain't going down like that. Christ coming back with a sword right. and he's bringing a host of angels with nuclear fire with him. Right. You better understand this. It's high time we wake up and keep God's commandments. What I got you holding? Uh, read that. Psalm chapter 83 verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. They come together in these big gatherings. Come on. And they that hate thee. They that what? Hate thee. They that hate thee. The ones that hate you, they hate our God. That's why they painted them this color right here. They hate our God. That's why they made him a white man. Because they hate you and they hate the true Messiah. Come right. on. Have lifted up the head. They've lifted up the head and done what? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. The crafty counsel against his people is the projects. Now, let's see what the projects mean. Let's see what ghetto means. For Read two, this. Two definitions. Ghetto. Formerly in most European countries, a section of a city in which all Jews, all who? All Jews were required to live. All Jews were required to live in the ghetto. I got a question. Ain't this the ghetto? Yeah. So where are the people at that call themselves Jewish? Where they at? Do they live out here? No. Wait a minute. What did I say again? A section of a city in which all Jews were required to live. So if the so-called white man who calls himself Jewish today if he ain't here in the ghetto, and you're the ones that are here in the ghetto, who are the Jews? Who are the Jews, I said? You are the Jews. Let me get that in Revelation. I'm going to hold that. Read this real quick. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works. What did God say? I know thy works. God says he know your works. Come on. In tribulation. He know your tribulation. He know you're struggling right here in America. Come on. In poverty. His what? Poverty. God says, I know your poverty. Are the Jews or the people that call themselves Jews today, are they in poverty? Bring it up. 
No. Hell no. no. They run the diamond district. They run the music industry. They run all media platforms. They own all the news platforms. They not in poverty, bro. Right. You the ones that's in poverty. Right. You the ones that's in the ghetto right here. Right. Read it again. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, uh -huh. but thou art rich. God says, but you rich though. But you are rich. Why are you rich? Why are you rich? Because all of the promises of the kingdom of heaven and eternal life belongs to you. Right. It belongs to you. It don't belong to them. That's why they had to steal your nationality. Wake up. That's why they had to change your names and make you an African American That's and make right. you black. Why they call themselves Jews? Right. Because the promises pertain to you. Right. The promises don't pertain to them. God says, I know the what? I know thy works. And tribulation uh -huh. and poverty, uh -huh. but thou art rich. But you're rich, and I know the blasphemy. He know the what? The blasphemy. The word blasphemy means lies. Right. The lies. He says, and I know the lies of them, of them which say they are Jews. Now the people that say they are Jews and what God say? And are not. God said they are not the Jews. Right. Right. Why? Because the real Jews are standing up in front of the prophets right now today. Right. The real Jews are in Charleston, South Carolina, downtown right now, listening to the word of God. Right. Right. You are the Jews that are in the ghetto. Right. You are the ones that the Bible is talking about. Yeah. God says, I know the lies of them people who say they're the Jews, but they are not the Jews. Right. You are the Jews. Right. Right. And now, if we are the Jews, if we understand that we are the Jews, what should we be doing? What should we be doing? Oh yeah, give me this other definition. Read that. A section of a city, especially a thickly populated slum area. Hold on. I don't see no white people in this heavily populated slum area. Bring it up. Are there white people that live, are there Jewish people that live in this heavily populated slum area? No. But you here. Right on. Because God put us here. These are identifying markers to tell us who we are in these last days. That is what this is. God is calling each and every one of you that are in earshot right now to change your life. To change the way you think. To change the things that you do. And come back to keeping God's laws. Go back to Romans 12 and 2. For too long we have sat here in this damn slum in this damn overpopulated uh, uh, filth and have not turned to God's word. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 